Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for and welcome before all. Welcome to Face to Face. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having What me. What time on. is there? It is eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, your early bird, or this is because of us? <laughs> no, I have kids, and then my wife wakes up yeah. early too, so send them off to school. First, I would like to ask you about your training routines. Uh, uh, we we can skip the fact that uh, you have great training crew: T.J. Dillashaw, Brian Ortega, uh, Rafael Dos Anjos, Swanson, and uh, you know, like uh, that's a great crew. That's a great training crew. Yeah, definitely. We have a good group of guys, even guys that are signed yet for big uh, promotions. Um, come in every morning and work with us in that night time. Um, yeah, you know, you're just as good as your team is around you. So having guys like Cub Swanson, Brian Ortega, T.J. Dillashaw, Dos Anjos, um, just add the, the the talent to the pool, right? So you get to train with solid guys, go out there and test yourself every day and see where you stand out with some of the best guys in the world. Yeah. Describe your ordinary day, like uh, when you wake up, what are you doing? Uh, I hope Instagram lives are in the eight in the morning are not your <laughs> daily routine. Yeah, no. Um, let's see. When I wake up, I usually, you know, ha have my coffee and uh, supplements, and you know, see my kids off to school, and then I uh, start getting up, getting ready, uh, head to the gym. Um, sometimes getting a run in in the morning, uh, but get to the gym around ten, uh, start warming up with the guys uh my manager and trainer tiki gossen he also trains us and paul herrera and uh we go in there and just start our mma practice from 10 to about one o'clock in the afternoon and then from there i come home eat some eat some uh lunch come see come pick up my kids from school and then get ready for a wrestling practice at four o'clock uh that goes from like four to six o'clock and then come home eat dinner and then 7.30 to about 9 o'clock, I hit another session. And then, um, yeah, and then that's my day. Yeah, that's, that's a great schedule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's been a while since your last match, almost a year. Like, uh, do you feel that is, that is a long period without fight? Does that bother you? Or, you know, I know that you have had a minimum two fights uh, per, per year. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's an unfortunate spot. That's for sure. Um, when I fought in June and I lost the title, um, you know, I was ready to get back in there right away. Uh, wanted to fight probably, I wanted to fight in September, October, um, you know, started asking in August to fight someone. And then, uh, they had said that the top 10 or the top eight guys were already taken. You know, you had, um, Sergio was fighting Horiguchi, uh, Pe uh, Patchy was fighting Gallagher. Um, Leon, uh, um, Magomedov was fighting. Uh, who did he fight? He fought uh, Stotts. And then, um, so I asked, can I fight Leon Johigo? And they said, no, we're going to wait till the tournament. And uh, the tournament was supposed to happen in November and then December. And then it just kept getting pushed back and pushed back, right? And so. It was unfortunate. Um, you know, there was nothing I could do. It was out of my control. I kept asking to fight. I, I was willing to even fight up in the upper weight classes, 155, 145. It didn't matter at that point. But, uh, you know, they, they wanted to hold me off. So, you know, when you're put in the number one ranked position, you're put in a very unique position because you can't just fight people anymore at that point. The promotion yeah. has to make sense for the promotion to match you up with someone and you're waiting for people to fight. And then this tournament, uh, you know, had taken longer than what everyone had expected. So, you know, yeah, I did want to fight, but there was unfortunately nothing I could do and it was out of my hands. So it was a little frustrating, but I just kept training and stayed ready and kept time with my family and uh, just enjoyed the process. Yeah. So is it easier to become a champion or to keep the same place? Um. It's definitely not easy to become a champion because you're working your way so hard to get to the top, you know, and uh, every day, every every moment of your life is thinking about the title. And when you get there and you win, you know, there is some gratifying relief to it. But now you get a target painted on your back from everyone wanting to fight fight you. 
everyone trying to say you're scared to fight them and, you know, just dealing with everyone just trying to make their way for a title fight by, you know, um, verbally attacking you and, uh, you know, assaulting you and things like that. So, uh, but it's part of the sport, right? Like you, you say, well, you prove yourself and then you get the title fight, right? So right now I'm back in the opposite position where I got to prove myself now. So this next fight, uh, whoever it may be, I don't know. I don't even know who I'm fighting yet or when I'm fighting still. So when I get put in this position, it's, I got to go out there and make the most of it. Yeah. So you have 25 wins and only three losses. Uh, it definitely makes you a big champion, you know, and from this position, uh, which fight was like, let's say harder from you, uh, the first, uh, loss with Andres or the last one when you lost the title? Um, they're all different, right? Like my first loss that I lost, I was still very brand new to the sport and hadn't done much jujitsu. Um, and so getting caught kind of helped me slow me down. So it was actually more of a blessing in disguise, right? Like, uh, I was able to really look at how I was training and evolve myself and spend more time getting better. And then, uh, my next loss was, you know, to Pitbull, uh, after being on an 18 yeah. fight win streak, 19 fight win streak, uh, you know, full of confidence, ready to go in. And uh, I still feel like that wasn't my best self, right? Like I, uh, there were some mitigating circumstances that happened in the back with commission and things like that, that kind of took me, my head uh, wasn't in the game, so to speak, when I first went out there and fought. And then it took me a while to get going. So that was frustrating. And then my last loss, um, you know, not, uh, uh, you know, Pettis just had the jump, the drop on me and, uh, you know, had, had, uh, hurt some, some of my tools, uh, you know, granted to him, uh, being able to be, uh, defensively sound, broke my foot and broke my hand. So those were things that he was able to do to shut me down. So that one was frustrating because I kept coming up short and, uh, it was nothing I could do. It was just my foot was giving out and my hand, you know, was throbbing and swollen. So good, good, good on his part. Yeah. Can you, can you choose one of your fights? Like you said, uh, I'm the proudest of like, yeah, I did amazing job there. I think it was probably my patchy mix fight. Like that's where I really felt like, uh, my, my level of expertise on just being an MMA fighter had, had grown to be a, a world champion. Yeah, I, I was defensive. I was down two rounds and then having to come back and win the next three rounds and kind of, take it away from my style of fighting and stick to a stand-up fight and being able to show and utilize everything that I've been doing for the last five to six years of working my stand-up game had showed off in that fight. So that's the one I was very proud of. For sure. And uh, uh, you once said something uh, and I, I felt like that is completely true. Like, does anyone mind uh, if MMA, f MMA fight, fighter lo uh, lose or we are just waiting for him to uh, pick himself up and, you know, uh, bring himself back to the game. Yeah, I think the best thing about MMA is that uh, no one really cares if you, you win or lose, right? They just want a, a really good performance. Like, they, they want to see a good fight. They want to, you know, that, like my pit bull fight. I don't feel like that was a good fight, uh, my best fight. But, you know, you go on YouTube and it's over, you know, five five million views easily you know i think five yeah so like um you know you see those type of fights and it's just people are replaying that fight because they like to watch it or you know whether i'm getting beat up or not you know it's just like it's it's cool to see and then my other fights you know my duty dantes fight get uh you know landing that one on sports center and um you know that that was uh you know probably one of the pinnacle parts of my career is being in Madison Square Garden and knocking someone out at the, at the buzzard and being on ESPN Sports Center is uh, something that athletes dream about, right? So those are uh, cool experiences that you have and thanks to the fans of like not giving up on you because you lose, you know, I was five and one at one time and I already had lost, but people still believed in me. They kept building me up and as I kept winning and kept having great performances and, uh, you know, so I don't, I don't think MMA fans really – it's not like boxing, right? Where, uh, well, boxing starts yeah, to change as well. For sure. Like boxing, people don't care about people losing. Now they like Gabriel Rosado. He's still going out there and winning world titles and, and, and is an awesome fighter. And I still tune in and watch him fight as well. So 
you know, I think we're starting to see a change because people like redemption stories. Yeah. So do you know anything about your next fight? All I know is that I was told I was going to fight April 23rd. And then um, when they announced the fights, I guess I'm not fighting April 23rd. So right now I have no idea. Now that they announced these uh, first four fights, um, I'm assuming that we're going to be told here sh soon because these, these matchups got made. So I don't know if, what uh, what the waiting period is on the 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 next four of us uh, to fight. So, you know, unfortunately, I don't. I've been left in the, I guess, dark, so to speak, like everyone else. Bellator does a good job and an uncanny job of not telling anyone what's going on. <laughs> so it's it's a it's a little strange, but I have to stay ready, and uh, it's kind of weird, but. Um, you know, like right now, my weight is up in the uh, high 174, you know, and I, and I don't know when I'm fighting. So hopefully soon we can find some information now so we can start cutting the weight. Yeah, so uh, if you will be able to choose uh, which UFC fighter would you like to fight in the future? Uh, UFC fighter in the future, whoever has a belt, uh, you know, um, I would definitely like to fight, right? It's, uh, uh, want to make my way and, um, you know, when it's all said and done, be a champion in every organization that I fought for. And so far I've done it. So, um, I've been blessed and, um, put in awesome positions where I've been able to fight for titles and, you know, defend my honor and defend my family's name and my, my country and being able to win world titles has been a blessing. So what do you think about uh, Aljamain Sterling or Peter Yan? I think Peter Yan is a very explosive fighter, right? Like he's very intelligent. He has uh, superior um, mar martial arts skills, right? Like his, 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 his intelligence to be able to read fighters during a fight and make adjustments along the fight is some of the best I've ever seen before, you know? And, um, He's able to take some damage, which, you know, is due to his defense because he's able to block. And so I think he's definitely one of the premier fighters in the bantamweight division, as well as Aljamain Sterling, right? Like uh, Aljamain in that fight had put a lot of offense out there. And um, if his cardio holds up in this next fight, you know, it could be a problem for Jan if he's able to keep that offense going and the takedowns and things like that. And, uh, keep the grappling going where he wears down Jan and uh, Jan, but Jan has great wrestling and jujitsu as well. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a very close fight until one guy is able to start slipping away and taking advantage of missed opportunities and missed positions. So me personally, I think Jan is more patient than Aljamain and Jan will pull off the win. So uh, we all know that uh... Uh, if you want to be one of the top MMA artists, like you need to invest a superhuman effort, you need to work hard to build up a work ethic, you know, to invest money uh, for good gym, uh, coaches, food, supplementation, etc. So how much money is that? Like uh, how much investment do you need to stay on top? If you know yeah, what I mean, like can, can we calculate it? Yeah, I mean food, uh, right? Like I'll tell you right now, um, from after my last fight uh, until now, I've been spending pretty much every dime that I have getting ready for my next fight, and I don't even know when it is, and I have nothing lined up. I mean, here, I'll show you some due to COVID, right? Like, uh, we've had to emphasize, uh, like do things on our own. So, you know, I have my own workout gym here as far as yeah. weights and all this stuff Great. here. Not only that, I had to... Um, utilize my garage space into my my own training center. So, yeah, th th those were things that um, I had to do during quarantine and, uh, you know, during this whole pandemic was, you know, invest in my my own personal gym to be able to keep training and, you know, not, not catch COVID or uh, be de denied a fight because I was positive for COVID and things like that. So what do you think, like, the best male uh, and the best female uh, fighter ever showed up uh, in the, on the MMA scene? 
I believe one of the best fighters as far as female uh, goes. Uh, I mean, we're the female sport's still evolving so much, right? Like, uh, yeah. for for a second, Ronda Rousey was one of the best, and then Misha Tate came in and beat uh, and, and beat her. Holly Holm came in and beat her, and then uh, then you had Amanda Nunez come in. I think you know, for as far as pound for pound wise, definitely uh, Amanda Nunez because you know she cleared out two divisions. You know, but you got Shelvenko yeah. that's, um, I mean, she's one of my favorite fighters as well. And then, ah, oh, man, I mean, to take away Joanna, I mean, that's that's an insult as well, right? Because Joanna is just a, a killer. So I could do a top three. Personally, I, I would say it was Joanna, Shelvenko, and uh, 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 Nunez is uh, definitely some of the best women fighters that I personally like watching. Um if I'm going to tune in and watch one women fight, uh, it, it'll definitely be um, Joanna. Yeah, I, I think Joanna is one of my favorite women fighters. And as far as male fighters, uh, I mean, hands down, it would have to it would have to be St. Pierre, right? Like, he's he was able to mix – he was one of the first uh, MMA fighters to mix everything together as far as stand-up, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, yeah. and um, – Actually, I take that back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry because there's a lot of them, right? John Jones had actually, what, of course, uh, all bullshit aside of everything that he does, he was able to beat people where they were the best at. Like, you know, they said, "Oh, you know, uh, Shogun's gonna knock you out," and he went and beat up Shogun. Or he said, "Machida's gonna knock you out." You know, he he was able to beat people uh, that were the best at jujitsu, beat them in jujitsu. The best at stand up, he was able to beat them in stand up. The best at wrestling, he took them down and and still beat them up. You know, so I think he's had some of the greatest performances in in UFC history. Yeah, that's definitely so. I think this will be maybe a hard question for you, but <laughs> we'll see. If, ha if you have to choose uh, only one person that uh, will be uh, in your corner du during uh, ha uh, your hardest title fight ever, who will be that person? Like uh, TJ Dillashaw, uh, Rafael Dos Anjos, or Ortega? Oof. You have to choose be between them. Okay. Uh, just out of those three? Just out of those three. Yes. Okay. Uh, definitely, um, probably TJ Dillashaw. Um, you know, uh, but you know, he he's been he's been very helpful throughout my whole career. I mean, me and him train uh, every day together. Like uh, we do, we do MMA practice together. We do strength and conditioning together. We cut weight together. I mean, this is he's 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 been a huge staple in my corner and uh, been. A, a very good friend to me and helped me along the way. So, you know, one, I've seen some of the b biggest title fights and uh, went, seen them win some of the biggest title fights and lose the biggest title fights. So, you know, it's definitely been an emotional roller coaster with them. Um, but yeah. it was uh, experiences that I got to feel before I got in there and got my own title fights. And so it got me ready to be where I'm at right now. I thought, I thought you will say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I definitely would, um, I mean, even Cub Swanson, the, 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 that you left him out, like he was one of the first guys that I started training with him and Joe Daddy Stevenson that had always been in my corner that had helped me tremendously. So I don't want to take any anything away from those two guys as well. Okay, thank you for your answer. So yeah. what are your plans in near future? Like where are you going next? What will happen, you know? So my next fight, um, you know, whenever that's going to be, I want to, I, I need to win this fight. You know, I got either Leandro Higo, James Gallagher, or Magomed Magomedov. So um, those are the three people that uh, it dwindled down to, to I know who I'm going to fight out of those three. Or I know the three people that it could possibly be. I don't know who it is yet, but I mean, the next step is to beat that guy, right? And then hopefully win with uh, dominant fashion. Uh, that way it puts me into the title fight for the winner out of uh, Rufion Stotts and Sergio Pettis because ultimately, I don't care too much about the tournament. I just want my belt back. I just want to go back there and, and fight for my belt and be able to defend it because I don't feel like I was 100% when I defended that title. And, I, and you know, I don't really 
I feel like he beat the champion to in order to take it from me, but he won. But um, that that's why rematches are important. If he gets through Stotts and I get through my next fight, uh, hopefully that's the next fight to make. And then after that, I would defend the belt and then you know win the million dollar tournament. So that that's the ideal. And that and then I get two belts. I get the tournament belt and I get the the weight class belt. So that's the plan. Yeah, we can't wait to see that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, I'm excited. Hopefully it's somewhere, uh, you know. I mean, I know uh, right now they're fighting in Hawaii, right? Like, that's a, that's a – I wish I could have gone there. I, I, I don't know why we didn't get announced on that card, but something happened. So um, now now we have to wait. Obviously, I would like to fight in, in Hawaii as well, but California is always a great place to fight. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, we hope we'll see you next time with your belt. Oh, yeah, Back. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, don't forget about us. Oh, yeah. Freak MMA. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a nice All right. day. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.